I've been waiting on one of these for quite a while now. All right, party people. Today is finally the day, but I finally have pretty much the only aftermarket P10C slide that I've ever seen on the internet. 100% made in the United States. It's actually made by a company that sent me my very first Glock slide to review three years ago. Uh, they're called Norso CNC. I don't know if you've heard of them or not, but everything that they do now is aftermarket slides. They got all the machinery and it's all manufactured in Las Vegas. So kind of cool. And when I got it, I was like, wow, this is a really cool option because well, you don't got to send your slide off and have it milled. Some people like to keep their gun as stock as possible. And then, you know, if you get aftermarket stuff, you can just put the stock parts back on it in case you ever want to sell it or something. But I was really kind of concerned about, well, hey, how's it going to function? How are all the internals going to fit? Where am I going to get the internals from? That was the other question. Don't worry, we're going to cover all that here in a second when we dive up close. I was really excited to shoot this. I also have a very new compensator on it that we're going to talk about a little bit as well. So if you didn't see my previous videos on this P10C, I did have my OEM slide milled by Primary Machine and I do have the Primary Machine compensator and stuff on that slide. I was trying to find it so I could show it to you in this video. But the downside is my gun safe's a mess. I actually have a new gun safe coming. That's cool. We're going to be doing a gun safe tour whenever it arrives because I'm running out of room. But anyways, I'll link to the video where you can see the uh, the way that this CZP 10C looks with the other slide on it. But let's stop wasting time. Let's look at this guy up close. And then we're going to go over shooting footage, see how it shoots and see if it's worth a crap. And then based off of the results of the test and everything, I'm going to let you know if it was my money, would I buy it or not? So I'm gonna show you a couple other little mods here that we gotta talk about too, but this is essentially it. Look at that beautiful thing. This is called the Reptile Slide. I have other Reptile Slides as well. I have one for the Glock 26, I believe, or the Glock 19, I don't remember. And then I have one on this P320 as well. I actually just got this one in, waiting on some sights, and then we're gonna go test this one. But I remember when, you know, Norso came out with this slide, they actually messaged me and said, hey man, what do you think of this? And I was like, dude, that's gonna be epic. And if you can see that, that's exactly exactly why they call it the reptile is because of the way that serrations look, the way the opening of that window looks. Very, very tasteful logo right here. I'm really weird about logos on slides as long as it's not a huge sign. Got the RMR cut up here and then on this side is the same exact thing. I have it paired up with this trigger is made by HBI Industries. I'll have a link for that as well. Uh, they have multiple colors on the trigger, sh trigger shoe. Also have the Enforce APL Compact on it, my favorite weapon light ever for at least concealed carry and compact guns. Primary machine barrel, and then we got this brand new compensator that we're gonna go over here in a little bit called the Harrington Arms Compensator. Also, I'm using a PO7 mag in it right here just for a couple of extra rounds over here we have these shield arm mag extensions plus five uh, i've been using these for over a year now they run really well and i believe i have a code for these and i have them in my tier one holster which we'll talk more about the holster later i wanted to just kind of test how these front serrations how they feel on the hand if i got to put a lot of pressure or not a lot of pressure work just fine. They really grab the skin of your hand really well. And you could tell by the way that these are angled, when you start pulling it, it's like they dig into your skin even more so. And the same thing with these top serrations up here. Looking at the fitment here, um, it's the same as it is with my OEM slide. You know, very little movement on the slide, left and right, nothing up and down, yet it doesn't have any issues reciprocating. And that's all fine and dandy, but now we got to go over the shooting footage and see how the heck this thing runs and see if this is something that I would buy knowing what I know now. Back up top. All right, cool. I am super excited for this slide. You know, when I did the original build, I had it Cerakoted in burnt bronze. And I've never had a gun Cerakoted in burnt bronze. And although I love it, there's something about a gun that's either gray or black that just has my heart in it. That's really cool. So I kind of went over my main concerns, right? Wondering about how the parts are going to fit, wondering about how it's going to fit onto the frame. You know, is there going to be any type of fitment issues? Because, you know, whenever you do like polymer 80 builds and stuff where you buy aftermarket parts, sometimes parts just don't fit as well as they should. And for this one, they fit really well. The other thing that I was worried about was, will they fit my holster 
or not. This is my tier one concealed holster. I've been using it for a while. When I first ordered this holster, I didn't know that I was gonna have a plus five mag extension on here. If you do get it with a plus five mag extension, they do have a option where this will sit lower so this doesn't sit up so high. And then they also have an option or you can put it in the comments. I think that's what I did. With the CZP10C holsters, if you need like a cutout for a compensator on it or something, if you go and like when you're filling out everything, you'll just put comments, hey, leave room for a compensator. That's what I did because somebody mentioned that they didn't have a little check box for compensator or not. That may have changed, but I'll have a link below for these holsters. These are definitely my favorite holsters to date. In fact, I have like six of these that none of you guys have seen yet which we're gonna be having in an upcoming holster video. So I took it to the range. Unfortunately, you know, I can't go outside shooting right now because it's 110 degrees and we have fire restrictions here where I live. So I'm stuck at indoor ranges for the rest of the summer. Put 150 rounds through it. It feels solid. I tried different types of ammo in it. I tried some NATO rounds through it, some Winchester NATO uh, 124 grain. I also shot some 115 grain and some 147 grain. It cycled everything flawlessly, even with this Harrington Arms compensator. Speaking of the comp, let's talk about that a little bit more. So when it comes to compensators, if you've seen any of my other videos on Glock comps or MMP comps or whatever it is, I have two or three rules that I think all comps should pass in order for me to consider it. And the reason I bring that up is if I have a compensator, I might wanna carry that compensator. And in order to do that, I need it to be as flawless as possible. Now, if it's for a race gun or just a range toy, these rules don't really apply. So rule number one, I want it to be able to shoot standard 115 grain range ammo without any types of malfunctions. Number two, shooting that 115 grain range ammunition, I want it to be able to cycle perfectly with the OEM guide rod and guide rod spring. Those two things are 100% my pass fail test for any compensator, at least for any type of self-defense use. A couple of people have mentioned in the past, you know, what about muzzle flash? Does that bother you? It really doesn't. The thing I like about compensators is when you do get the muzzle flash, it's very predictable. They always come out of these little ports that are on the end. So it's not like if you have just a standard open barrel, when you get muzzle flash on a regular barrel, it can be all over the place. So at least with a compensator, you get predictable muzzle flash. That part I like, I've never been burned, you know, from anything or any of the fire that comes out of it. Some people say they have, I've never heard of that legitimately happening, but this compensator passes all of those tests. <laughs> A couple of things to note about this compensator is it is a single port compensator, meaning it has one single port on the top, as opposed to the one from Primary Machine, which has two ports on top, one being larger than the other. It also has ports on the side that you can see the same as this one. Now, one thing that I found that's different about this one than this one is number one, you have brass set screws that are actually really beefy. The reason for that, if you over tighten it and you strip out the bolts, it's not gonna damage the threads on the compensator, it's just gonna damage the little set screw, in which they have replacement brass set screws on their website. They're only like $2 for a replacement set. That's kind of the theory behind this. I know that Legion Precision for his Glock comps, he does the same thing. It, it's becoming more and more of a norm because a lot of people are stripping their stuff out and damaging the comp. They do go in at a 90 degree angle on the sides. And then as opposed to the primary machine, these are a lot smaller. They're not made of brass, but they go in at an angle, kind of like this up onto the barrel. They don't impede on the barrel threads, they do lock down on the shoulder of the barrel. I don't have an OEM CZ P10C slide to show you, but a couple of things that I appreciate about this slide in particular is it has everything that I would want on a slide and nothing that I don't want. You know, I like windows and stuff on slides. They're not unnecessary for me, but the one things that I do like is very aggressive serrations, which on the front here with the reptilian scallops here, super easy to pull that back. 
You also have these beautiful looking scales on the top. Those are super easy to pull back if you're gonna do press checks. On the rear here, it's pretty much the same as the standard serrations on the P10C. Anyway, the other thing that I wanted to note about this, when the CZ P10C first came out, they were having issues with the striker rotating. Then they came out with a second batch of slides where they didn't rotate. And let me show you how you can identify if that has been fixed or not. You see this tiny little notch? on the back. I don't know exactly how it works, but that little hole indicates that you're not gonna have the issues with your striker rotating. My original slide that I have does not have that hole. Now there are some companies that offer a service. So if you have a slide where it doesn't have that little hole in it to prevent the slide from rotating it, there are a there is a company or so out there that you can send them your slide and they will drill that hole for you. So I'll, I'll make sure to put that in the build list as well. The other thing that I really appreciated about this kit was it came with everything I needed. A couple of things that bother me when I order aftermarket slides, and this doesn't matter who the, who the company is, is when I get an aftermarket slide, if it has an optic cut on it, I want it to have an optic plate. I can't tell you how many slides I've ordered or had sent to me. And then I'm like, dude, I need an optic plate because I don't have you know a thousand red dots just laying around to throw on. And sometimes whenever I go to take a red dot off another gun, I end up stripping the screws because they're locked tight it in. This one, you can choose to get it with or without the cover plate. But what else is cool is they also include a shortened pin that holds your extractor in place. Because when you mill it, your extractor pin would stick up too high. So they include, I think, two of those in the box. At least that's what was in my box. And that way, in case you lose one, you have another one. Speaking of which, where the heck do you get more internals for these? That's a fantastic question. For my striker assembly and you know safety plunger and things like that, I, I just took the ones that were in my other slide out and put them into this one. Because I only have one frame, I only need to run one of these at a time. So right before the slide arrived on my other P10C slide, I just Loctited the red dot in place from changing the battery. So I didn't want to take the red dot off because I needed to take the red dot off to get the pin and the extractor and everything out. So what I did, primary machine has these extractors for sale. So I bought an extractor, but then I realized, oh wow, I don't have the extractor spring anywhere. And I couldn't find it. Like I saw it at the CZ website and it was gonna be like eight weeks for shipping. If you need internals for like your extractors and stuff, send a primary machine an email and they'll probably sell them to you. I don't know 100% for sure, but otherwise you're just gonna have to take them out of your OEM slide. When shooting this with the compensator on it and everything, it feels identical to the way that my primary machine slide with its compensator on it how it feels. It feels 100% the same. I had zero malfunctions as I was going through the magazines and just testing different types of ammo. So with that being said, you're probably wondering, well, hey, what the heck does this thing cost? This could be a good or a bad thing to you and I'll let you guys decide. It costs $489. And I know what you're thinking. You're like, dude, I can buy a CZ P10C for that. Currently, I was looking around for some OEM slides. If you do find them, they're usually about $300 for an OEM slide. Well, if you wanna have that slide machined and have all these kind of cool cuts put into it and have a red dot put onto it, that's gonna cost you about $250 to $300 to have that done. If you didn't wanna mill your, your OEM slide and you wanted another slide, you could go buy an OEM one and have all the work done, but then you're gonna spend $600. So it is expensive. So would I buy it knowing what I know now? Yes, and let me tell you why. Number one, I know how it's manufactured. I know that it's made out of quality steel in the manufacturing process. Number two, it's made in Las Vegas, Nevada. The other thing I know about these slides is they're not buying slide blanks from a big company somewhere that has you know iffy quality assurance. They're literally just taking bar stock and making these themselves. And I know that they're using high quality bar stocks. And because they take all those measures to make sure that the quality is there, you're not gonna have any issues with it on fitment or cycling, at least I didn't. Now I will say, if you have one of these primary machine barrels, these barrels do have to be fitted to a slide. And so if that's the case, you do gotta break in the barrel to the slide a little bit, you know, otherwise you might have some malfunctions, but that's not due to the slide. That'll happen with the OEM slide. So they come in basically two colors. This one is a black nitride, which is basically my favorite coating ever. And it's way more durable than any type of Cerakote ever thought about being. But they also have a distressed nitride that you can get as well if you want something that's just a little bit different. I think they're solving a problem that isn't being solved by any other companies by providing ready to buy off the shelf CZP 10 C slides that are already customized with the red dots and everything. You know, it really doesn't matter what I think about this guys. Let me know what you think about it 
down in the comments because I'd like to have that discussion with you. I'll reply to you guys, so I'll do my best. Until next time, you guys stay sexy and I love you.